Hello students, how are you? Hope that you are well. Today we are going to talk about something that is related with the life and uh, uh, skills of the students. And this topic which, uh, which we are going to deal with is associated with the overall development of children. As students, you might be having something in your mind that what you are going to become and what skills you are going to acquire and achieve. You know, curriculum is uh, of vital importance uh, to develop the mind, to develop the body and to have an overall development in a child. Uh, curriculum plays a significant role in the overall development of the society and in the overall development of a child as an individual. Since time immemorial, you know, that the educationists and philosophers, they have focused on the development of uh, the uh, individual in the society because an individual is not living in isolation. He lives in a group and that group forms a society. And for that reason, uh, to educate the child, to make him to learn something is of very, very significant, uh, is very significant. So in order to develop and have uh, some uh, positive change in the child, the ancient philosophers related with education, they have uh, directed towards some aspects of curriculum, some aspects of education. And actually it is the net output, net result of what you learn, that if you spend your time doing something, you learn something. So reading something is one of the things which a child gets out of a curriculum. He learns writing, he learns uh, the uh, mental, uh, mathematical skills. And uh, from that point of view, uh, these three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic, they are supposed to be very necessary, very essential in the growth and development of a child. And with the passage of the time, uh, in the modern times, we find that the objectives of education, they have totally uh, expanded out, so not changed, they are expanded. And in addition to these three arts, in addition to reading, writing, and the skills of mathematics, uh, the modern educationists think that the child should have a development of his head. It means his thinking capacity should be expanded. It should be uh, developed and his heart should be developed. He should have the feeling of sympathy and empathy. He should be sensitive to the social problems, to the uh, life around himself. And he should be more careful about his own health, not only his health, but the health of the people around himself. So, the demand of the society is to create a harmonious and a fully developed child as a citizen. So, uh, the development of the society and the development of an individual as a child, it rests on the study of curriculum. Curriculum should be developed in such a way that it should look forward to, it should take care of the development of the society um, on one hand and the development of an individual on the other. Uh, the term curriculum is uh, derived from the Latin word curie, curie, tone, tone pronunciation, just focus on the spelling and the meaning of this Latin word curie it means a race course or it is an athletic ground, or a platform, a runway, or a course on which one learns to reach the destination. So curriculum, what exactly is curriculum? Curriculum is a ground through which the children have to pass in order to reach a definite goal in limited duration. You know, for the curriculum which is designed, it has got so many steps and one has to go because when a child takes admission in a nursery he automatically is promoted to uh, the primary school the secondary school the higher secondary one and graduation then post graduation this is a, this is the ground in which the 
child has to pass through and at the end he what he achieves degree is for this for the namesake he is totally groomed into a well refined well developed child into a well developed citizen of this this world don't limit him uh, to a particular place because an individual when he lives in the society he becomes the citizen of the world and curriculum is that path which has to be followed by a teacher for achieving the aims of education education is a three way process in which the following or in which these three elements are of crucial importance one is the teacher another one is the student and the third one is curriculum so without uh, anyone without the absence of anyone out of these three you cannot complete the process of uh, curriculum uh, or the process of the overall development of a child or the development of the society these three the actually the development of the society depends on these three pillars teacher is one of them students is also one of them and curriculum is one of them without these three you cannot go ahead so in a way we find that curriculum plays a significant role in the overall development of a child curriculum is a is a medium for interaction between a teacher and the student to achieve the educational objectives until and unless interaction takes place between the teacher and the and the taught the educational objectives uh, cannot be achieved and the content of the curriculum has to be selected according to the changing needs and requirements of the society what uh, elements are to be put what contents are to be included in in the syllabus that is a very debatable issue where uh, the society needs something and something else is added to the syllabus that will that will not meet the objective of the education so uh, the change in curriculum should be done in accordance with the need of the society until and unless this is done your child will not show any kind of growth in his uh, learning in his own personality and uh, if the curriculum is properly and significantly organized and designed it definitely enables the students to know the subject matter which they have to study better so uh, suitability and even proper organization of the syllabus which makes uh, a great difference in the uh, output of the education and output of the syllabus there are some definitions which i have collected from different sources and out of them uh, one is by cunningham uh, he has made use of a very decorative language to define what exactly is curriculum for him curriculum is the tool in the hands of the artist artist he means by artist the teacher to mold his material material on which the artist is working is the pupil and according to his ideals what are the ideals of the teacher the objectives of education in the studio the school becomes the studio here so with this ornamental language cunningham wants to convey that the teacher has to function as an artist and the pupil is in the form of a raw material before him and the studio where uh, the studio the school becomes the studio for him and here the the, the objectives of the curriculum the objectives of education could be achieved here second definition we find is of uh, crow and crow uh, they define curriculum as the curriculum includes as the learners experience in or outside school that are included in a program which has been derived to help him develop mentally physically economically socially and morally crow and crow focus on four different aspects that uh, whatever the learners experiences are there the experiences of two types they are inside the school and they are of the outside world so whatever the experiences a child gains and acquires while uh, 
uh, studying uh, those experiences should be such that they should they should help him to uh, develop him mentally physically economically socially and morally without that the purpose of education the objective of education could not be served next definition which we have before with us is by munro Mun, for munro curriculum embodies all the experience which are utilized by the school to attain the aims of education so whatever the experiences a child is gaining in in the process of learning so all all those experiences should be the aim of education then we have mr p samwell who defines curriculum as uh, the sum total of is the sum total of experiences of the pupil that he receives through the modified activities that go on in the school in the classroom in the laboratory in the workshop in the, in the playground and in the numerous informal contacts between the teacher and the and the pupil so sample's definition is is self explanatory because whatever you study or whatever the form of the curriculum is there Uh, the child should have many fold activities that he goes to the school he learns in the classroom he ex- he he has different experiences in laboratories he goes to the workshop he plays on the playground and he has a variety of informal contacts with uh, the teacher and his uh, uh, fellow students so out of those things he learns so many things and which helps him to develop to bring an overall development in his personality that will be good he has different opinion about the same for him curriculum is a general overall plan of the content or specific material of instruction that the school should offer to the students by way of qualifying them for graduation or certification for entrance into professional or vocational field so curriculum is the general and overall plan it is a vast plan of the topics and specific material of instruction that the school is going to teach him and even after the schooling he should qualify for the graduation or some certificate course or he will appear for for some entrance exam we find so many examples that the that the uh, students even after completing graduation and post graduation they think themselves not fit for the society so it is here that the uh, curriculum curriculum which is designed but the student has not get what he wanted or what he is expected to get out of that curriculum it does not mean that curriculum or syllabus is not worthy it was not fit out or it was not anything that could not bring any change in him the change should be from the inner self of the child he should learn he should be motivated and until and unless what very world class curriculum is there before you but you do not get it imbibed within yourselves it is of no use for you so this definition speaks much about uh, the uh, absorbing capacity absorbing ability of a child that he should absorb whatever he is experiencing around himself uh, next definition is probable probable uh, for him the curriculum should be conceived as an epitome of the rounded whole of the knowledge and the experience of the human race what what how should you conceive how how, how do you understand as some something how do you take the knowledge or a human experience as such so what whatever you learn whatever you experience whatever you observe around you that becomes the uh, basic uh, need of the education and then you have went and cronenberry they believe that curriculum cannot be restricted to a list of books 
because it must include other activities which provide the student with the knowledge and the skill he require in facing various situations of life meet the requirements of the children so one uh, concept is there in the mind that the curriculum uh, must be restricted to certain good books that you uh, go through because for bent and cronenberry curriculum is not what you read in the books curriculum also includes other activities which gives the students two things one knowledge another skill and these two things could be acquired through various life situations and whatever the child observes around himself he will try to catch it he will try to imbibe it within himself and by doing so he he will improve himself and that is the uh, main reason or that is the main cause behind the uh, curriculum uh, we have the definition given by henry t otto they define that uh, curriculum be considered as the vehicle whereby and through which we hope to enable children to achieve the objectives of education so for them for for, for henry otto curriculum is a vehicle through which we lead the students to achieve the objectives of education in very simple words he has defined it then alexander alexander's definition is there what he thinks is that curriculum is the sum total efforts of the school to bring about desired outcomes in the school and out of this school situation so curriculum is for alexander curriculum is the sum total of efforts of the school whatever the efforts the school is taking and whatever the efforts the child is taking in the school situation and out of the school situation it is just the total sum of both these that the child gets out of both situations and that is only curriculum and then we have i will i will go somewhat uh, in a hurry manner because there are number of definitions before us uh, hr hl caswell for caswell curriculum is all that goes in the lives of their parent and teachers the curriculum is made up of everything that surrounds the learners in all his working hours in fact curriculum has been described as the environment in motion so curriculum is not only related with the student and teacher it involves the lives of parents as well and for that reason curriculum is made of everything that surrounds the learner because by observing the surroundings you learn so many things everything is not taught through the books everything is not taught through curriculum you have to be self motivated to learn so many things by observation only by your experiences only because it is said that experience is the only teacher which teaches you so many things and uh, in the end of the definition caswell has mentioned that curriculum is described as the environment in motion so whatever is in motion around yourself environment is in motion ultimately and from that environment you observe and you learn multiple things that a book cannot teach you and then you have the definition given by davy john davy john davy he mentioned that the scheme of curriculum must take into account of the adaptation of the studies to the needs of the existing community life it must select with intention of improving the life will you in common so that the future shall be better than the past he has again focused on the communal living the living in community living in society because an individual cannot cannot survive for long living alone by himself that is why that is why when we live in common we have to think that the future should be better than what was the past so curriculum should be selected curriculum should be designed in such a fashion that future should be or future should be made better than 
would he lived a past life? And uh, the Secondary Education Commission, uh, which worked between 1952 to 53, it states that curriculum does not mean only academic subject traditionally taught in the school, but it includes it includes the totality of experiences that a pupil receives through the manifold activities that go in the school, in the classroom, library, laboratory, workshop, playgrounds, and the numerous informal contacts between teachers and pupils. In this sense, the whole life of the school becomes the curriculum which can touch the life of students at all the points and help in evaluation of a balanced personality. Some reflections of all the definitions we could see in this definition given by the Secondary Education Commission. This commission mentioned that curriculum does not mean only academic subject traditionally taught in the school. Curriculum is something different. Definitely it is one of the parts of the curriculum, the textbooks which are, which are, which are prescribed in the, uh, in the school syllabi is one of the parts. But along with those books, whatever the experiences the child receives from his interaction with his fellow students, from his interaction with the teachers and whatever he learns in the classroom, when, when, when he goes to the library he learns something. When he performs ex experiments in the laboratories, he, he, he has different experience. And when he goes to workshop to do something, he learns something. When he plays, he learns something out of that. And even whenever he comes in contact with his teachers, with his fellow students, he learns so many things. So all whatever he observes must be or it helps the child to make his personality a balanced one and the final definition there are so many multiple definitions of, of course about uh, curriculum but uh, we, uh, we have restricted to a few definitions here and this is the last one national society for the study of education usa defines curriculum as curriculum may be defined as the totality of subject matter activities and experiences which constitute a pupil's school life. Very simple definition. Curriculum is the totality of subject matter. Whatever the uh, subjects are taught, whatever the matter is taught to the child, it is the totality of that, whatever is taught and whatever the activities are performed and whatever the experiences he collects in, in the uh, school life. Curriculum based on all these three things one the subjects taught in the school second the activities performed in the school and the experiences the child gets with his own observation so simply curriculum can be put in the form of an equation in a mathematical equation curriculum is equal to syllabus plus co-curricular activities performed in the school plus various parts of educational environment. So, what is curriculum? Now, you must note the difference between curriculum and syllabus because syllabus is limited. Curriculum is very vast. Syllabus is limited to one class but curriculum is the sum total of the whole learning of the child. Okay. So, curriculum is equal to syllabus plus co-curricular activities plus various parts of educational environment. After the definition of syllabus, we must focus on uh, the characteristic features of curriculum and uh, these features are as follows. of the society. It is not stagnant. Curriculum is not sta stagnant or statistic. Uh, it needs change. It is changing in nature. And how does it change? Curriculum is changed according to the needs of the society. Whatever the needs, whatever the requirements the society has, as per, the, as per those requirements, curriculum must be designed and redesigned. 
uh, and it is the correct it is a general overall plan of the content whatever the content is to be taught to the child from one class to the other it is the general plan curriculum is the general plan from uh, kindergarten to the master's degree or further also uh, curriculum is described as the whole environment in motion because observation from observation around yourself or uh, around a child the child feature uh, the next feature is curriculum tend to achieve some set goals and objectives of education which are set by the society curriculum must be such that whatever the goals and objectives the society set the curriculum should achieve it society and curriculum these are the interdependent uh, entities because without the society curriculum could not be there and curriculum could not be there if society does not exist and whatever the goal society decides curriculum has to be totally uh, um, in that framework and uh, curriculum means totality of experience that a pupil receives from from the uh, previous definitions we are we, draw, uh, we are drawing out the features of curriculum curriculum is the total the total sum of experience of the student he receives at different levels at different situations school situation library situations laboratory situation playground situation and the situations in which he interacts with his teacher and with his fellow students curriculum includes all the experiences which are used by school to achieve the aims of education so one thing that you must uh, keep in mind that curriculum focuses on the experiences and the efforts the school applies to achieve the aims of education and uh, the outcome is the overall development of the child curriculum is not restricted to a list of books as discussed earlier that curriculum is not restricted to the certain list of books it is much beyond that curriculum is framed with the intention of improving human life everyone knows what is the intention of curriculum curriculum the intention of curriculum the main reason behind framing the curriculum is to bring about improvement in human life and it is more than teaching and learning and includes syllabus plus co curricular activities plus various parts of educational environment so curriculum is more than teaching and learning on one side syllabus is there that we teach and learn and on the other side we have curricular activities co curricular activities and uh, the various parts of educational environment that all merge together it gives something that is the overall development of the child curriculum is helpful in the development of harmonious balanced harmonious and balanced personality what is the feature of curriculum the feature which is more important is that the uh, uh, curriculum help is helpful in the development of a balanced personality harmonious uh, life and harmonious personality of a child it helps in now you might have some uh, different things in your mind that uh, what is going on here that is sometimes you see the word syllabus and sometimes you see the word curriculum so uh, what exactly the difference uh, syllabus is a part of curriculum curriculum as i told you earlier curriculum is very vast curriculum is the overall overall plan of educational system syllabus is a part of curriculum every class has got its own syllabus syllabus is part and curriculum is a complete teaching process syllabus is theoretical aspect it is narrow concept but curriculum is wider one and educationists prepare syllabus and curriculum is prepared by 
teachers. Syllabus is related with academic aspect. Curriculum is related with academic plus non-academic aspects at the same time. And syllabus is limited to cognitive aspect. Syllabus is limited to content only. Whereas, whereas curriculum is related to cognitive, affective, psychomotor aspect of education. It is, it is related with content also, but apart from content, it takes into account various things which are necessary for the development of the child. Syllabus is only verbal and book centered. So far as syllabus is concerned, it is taught and it is taught from the books which are prescribed. But curriculum, curriculum is comprehensive in nature. It is vast and wide and it includes books plus activities on which the stress of uh, syllabus is laid on learning and memorization. But content Absolutely. But curri curriculum, it lays stress on all around development of the student's personality. That is the difference between syllabus and curriculum. Principles of curriculum construction. How the curriculum could be constructed? It should be community centered. You know, as I told you earlier, that we are not living as individual in isolation. We are living with the society. And the uh, focus of the curriculum should be the community in which the individuals are living. It should be uh, society based. So, curriculum should be such, it should uh, keep into mind or keep, keep in focus the needs of the community because the child of the today is going to become an adult of tomorrow. And for, by keeping it in mind that the syllabus or the curriculum should be developed and constructed. It should have uh, flexibility. Curriculum should not be rigid. It should have uh, flexibility uh, in itself. Because whatever the situations in which we are living, accordingly, the syllabus should be flexible. It should be flexible to add something new. It should be flexible to uh, delete and remove something and in that way if the syllabus uh, if, if the curriculum is flexible we can achieve uh, the educational objectives so while constructing the syllabus the constructing the curriculum this aspect must be uh, kept in mind so before uh, construction of uh, curriculum teachers must be consulted and it is a very uh, tragic thing, it's a very sad thing on the part of the curriculum construction that it is always said by the persons who are least in touch with what is happening in schools and colleges. They are somewhere else. They design the curriculum, they plan it and they just ask the teachers to implement it. The teacher is one of the three pillars of curriculum is or it, he remains absent from the work of curriculum construction. Another uh, principle of curriculum construction is integration of theory and practice. So uh, more theoretical knowledge without its practiced application is a useless burden. Where practical knowledge without the support of essential, th essential theory is dangerous. So only theoretical knowledge without any practicality of it is all useless. And only practical knowledge without theoretical basis is also equally dangerous. Another principle of curriculum construction is principle of environment centeredness. Curriculum should be presented before the students in such a manner that the child is able to, to integrate it with the environment. Subject taught in the classroom should be treated in should not be treated in watertight compartments. Uh, actually, it is uh, the kind of multidisciplinarity that uh, the subjects which are taught in the classroom, the child should be able 
to correlate them with the outside world with his with the environment in which he is living there should not be a clear cut wall or water tight compartment uh, uh, made between one subject and the other because if each subject is interdependent or dependent on another subject and they taken together they contribute a great deal for the overall learning in a child another uh, principle of uh, curriculum construction is that it should be child centered the child needs experience more than instruction because children learn many things by doing uh, or by performing certain activities by themselves true education can only be acquired through activities and experiences a child should be treated as a child and not as an adult so everything if you are going to hammer over a child the child will not learn anything by himself just the demand of the curriculum is that we should leave the child uh, free so that he should acquire his own knowledge by observing and by performing certain activities another principle of curriculum construction is that the curriculum should be uh, should be uh, having some kind of motivation for the children and it is one of the features of curriculum that a good curriculum is only the one which motivates and inspires the child to learn and should be motivated to learn something so while framing the curriculum the psychology of the child should be uh, given more importance to a uh, curriculum must be activity centered curriculum should not be only textbook centered or book centered or uh, only teaching and learning centered it should be based on certain activities apart from teaching and learning co curricular activities should be uh, imbibed in the child and uh, because he will he, he will acquire the knowledge uh, which uh, the activities make him to learn child psychology states that children learn more through activity based methods so while teaching a child the activity based methods are to be incorporated so that this the the psychology of the child is such that they learn by doing the things practically for them it will help them to learn very easily and next principle is that of principle of correlation life in the school should be correlated with life outside the school we find that the uh, books uh, taught or the uh, content taught in the school is different from what the what, from what the child lives uh, or learns out of the school and while organizing the contents of curriculum or the content of a subject uh, we should arrange the topics in such a way that there should be a correlation between subjects and correlation of curriculum can be of following types correlation with life correlation with other subjects correlation among the branches of same subjects and correlation among various topics so without the correlation nothing could be achieved that the child should have in mind that two subjects are correlated he should not make difference between that science is different and english is different definitely they are they are different branches of knowledge but they are correlated with one another without the learning of a language you cannot learn science that is what uh, the intention behind correlation is there then another principle is that uh, the curriculum should have democratic values we are living in a democratic nation and in the light of democratic and cultural values curriculum should also be constructed on the democratic principle and the topics of curriculum uh, which are being to uh, or which are going to taught to the child should develop and inculcate the habits of tolerance appreciation sympathy cooperation 
democratic values like equality and brotherhood in China. And if these are taught, uh, it, it means that this curriculum is having the democratic, democratic values incorporated in it. Then we have the principle of utility. According to this principle, all that which is useful should be included in the curriculum of different subjects. Whatever is useful, whatever the uh, content is there, uh, which could be helpful, which could be useful for the future of the student, they are all to be included in the syllabus of various subjects. Then the principle of forward looking curriculum should be such which could enable a child to adjust as per the conditions of community when he has left the school. The curriculum should inculcate the spirit of democratic citizenship in the child because the child is the future of tomorrow. The child should get the knowledge which enables him to look forward in the future and progress. If the child has left the school, it does not mean that his learning has come to end. school depends more on the life in the school. Whatever you learn in the school, it is a treasure for the life. It is the tre treasure for a long time. That everything you remember and you try to apply in your practical life. So, uh, it should, the uh, curriculum should be constructed in such a way that it should develop the skill of forward looking in, in, the, in the child. And then we have the principle of centric, uh, the uh, principle of concentric growth. This principle indicates that we should proceed from known to unknown and from concrete to abstract. From known to known, everybody goes. From known to unknown makes a child to, uh, to discover something, to invent something. Because from concrete things, if you develop something which is abstract that you talk about philosophy, you talk about ideas, ideas and philosophy they are all abstract and the things which you which you see and feel and uh, you can gauge its size all are known as concrete. So from concrete one must go towards abstract and from known you, you must go to something that is unknown, unknown becomes known one day and known, known leads you towards the discovery of something that is unknown. And then we have the principle of comprehensiveness. The curriculum should be comprehensive. The curriculum should be complete within itself. It should assure uh, about the overall development of the child and in that way it should be comprehensive in in nature then we have the principle of evaluation about this principle uh, we must keep in mind that the achievement of the student can only tell what the students has learned in this way the effectiveness of any system can only be judged through its result whatever you do whatever the output is there from the output the effectiveness of that activity can be judged and it must it is must that our education system should have proper evaluation of performance of the teacher as well as the students this will help in achieving the objectives of education both should be evaluated the child as well as the teacher and if a proper system of evaluation is there then the teacher will get the scope to improve himself and he will teach, he will improve his teaching in order to develop, to bring the development in the child. Then we have the principle of individual difference. As per this principle, it is observed that people differ in terms of their mental processes, interests, aptitudes, attitudes, abilities, skills, habits, etc. Educationists believe that the curriculum should be designed so as to provide an opportunity 
for complete development of widely differing individuals. It should take into consideration low, average and highly intelligent students to provide them a chance to develop all his abilities to the greatest possible extent. As per this principle, curriculum should be all-inclusive. While framing the curriculum, it should be kept in mind that this curriculum is to be taught and to be learned by the individuals with different mental abilities, with different aptitudes, with different attitudes and attitudes and interests and abilities and skills and habits. And by keeping in, in by, by keeping this difference in mind and by keeping the ability of the students in mind that all the students are not equal. Some are having low, intel, low level of intelligence. Some are having average level of intelligence. Some are having high level of intelligence. So all should have the opportunity of learning. From that point of view, the curriculum must be designed. Uh, next principle is of curriculum of modernization. Uh, along with the principle of flexibility, the curriculum should adopt the principle of modernization because we are living in a modernized world. We are living in a computerized world. Every day new concepts are coming like uh, e-commerce, e-business, now online learning. So curriculum should be designed in such a way that it should meet the uh, uh, needs of the global world and it should be ready to change as per the uh, demand of the society. Now there are, uh, we, uh, we have uh, to discuss about uh, the base, basis, basis of curriculum construction. How the curriculum could be, could be constructed? There are some basis. Basis singular, basis is plural. Uh, a child gets himself adjusted with the society by living in it and in this way the need of the society depend upon the children of the school. It becomes important for the subjects to improve. Uh, it becomes important for the schools to provide a right curriculum for the social and educational needs. The curriculum has been formulated according to the needs and requirements of the society. In view of this, the following are the basis of curriculum construction. There are four bases and each base, if you ask question, why there is some philosophy behind it and when you describe that philosophy, it becomes the philosophical base for curriculum. How the curriculum should be taught in the school, if this question is asked, the reason might be given. And that reason becomes the psychological base. And what should be taught? The content of curriculum. And the in answer to this question, the sociological base is given. What is the practical utility of education? When you ask for the reason, some logical and scientific reasons are cited. And those reasons become the scientific base for the construction of curriculum. Philosophical base. For the construction of curriculum, understanding of philosophy of individual is essential. Curriculum is framed of the basis of four following philosophies. First is realism. Realism includes those activities in curriculum through which children are provided knowledge. Knowledge related with real life situations and the subjects concerning with day-to-day -day activities are included in realistic curriculum. What are included? Subjects related with day-to-day -day activities of life, they are included in realistic curriculum. Second concept comes, that is of idealism. The main idea of idealism curriculum is to include the eternal values of an ideal man. Hence the curriculum includes literature, art, music, etc. Idealistic base emphasizes on humanistic subjects. The main 
intention behind curriculum is to create ideal man a man with eternal values within himself and that is why variety of subjects like literature art music are included in syllabus so philosophical basis has idealism as one of the important points and idealism uh, focuses on humanistic subjects as we have humanity as a as a branch of knowledge nowadays so the the all, all the subjects which are included in humanity they come under the broad umbrella of philosophical base of curriculum third aspect of philosophical base is naturalism naturalism believes in the free development of a child thus the naturalistic curriculum provides unlimited liberty to the child for self expression it lays more emphasis on science subjects we here i remember the uh, case of uh, newton newton observes nature around himself How, why the apple fell down why has not it gone upwards so it has given a an scope for newton to ponder over and he developed the theory so if you focus on nat nature or the life around yourself why certain things are happening you uh, tend to study the subjects of science although science subjects are supposed to be difficult than the other but science depends on the life around ourselves the fourth aspect of philosophical base is pragmatism pragmatic philosophy believes in practical utility pragmatic curriculum is framed according to the interest of the child the curriculum is designed on practical interest and its utility in real life situations so whatever the practical usefulness of a, a knowledge is there pragmatism focuses on practical utility of curriculum curriculum should be such that it should bring about the practical uh, usefulness then we have uh, social basis the curriculum should be based on social qualities in children so that they can also contribute their best to social welfare and social development because an individual is living in the society and he should develop those social qualities and he should be always Uh, positive towards social welfare and social development that is the base of sociological uh, uh, what we call sociological base and then we you have psychological basis the curriculum should be framed on the basis of psychological principles that is based on psychology of the child the curriculum is framed according to the interest of the child natural tendencies capabilities age of the child the curriculum is framed keeping the child at the center whatever the aspects of the development of the child is there the curriculum should be framed in such a way that it should consider the psychology of the child it should it should keep in mind the interest of the child whatever the, the natural uh, tendencies of the children are there it should take into notice whatever the capabilities whatever the age group of the ch of the children is there in in a particular class all these aspects are to be kept in mind before designing a curriculum then uh, the fourth base of curriculum designing is scientific basis the philosophy this philosophy gives importance to scientific subjects in curriculum the supporters of this education and believes in practical and useful knowledge the curriculum is based on scientific attitude towards life and society with this base there is inspiration for scientific subjects to 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 be studied and uh, without the introduction of scientific subjects or science as subjects there are there is a group of people who think that without the study of the subjects of science life is as good as incomplete for them science uh gives a push 
to a life towards completeness and then uh, thank you we will uh, we will discuss the further things in in our uh, further uh, slides further course thank you.